Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is the ultimate Unity tutorial for beginners and welcome to episode 30. In this tutorial we're going to focus on opening this gate with the whole sequence and we're also going to bring in another NPC for outside this area. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this massive series and indeed everything else on game development on my channel and if you've enjoyed the series so far please feel free to check out my Patreon or YouTube memberships where you'll get things like early access, exclusive content, project files and a lot more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So we've already worked out how to open uh, doors and whatever else with uh, animation and basically this is going to be the same. Now I wanted to actually kind of recap a little bit on how this works because if you're using the same uh, assets as me this one will be slightly different because we don't need to create a hinge for this particular door. So firstly, let's go to our animations folder and let's create the animation for this door, which is this one right here. Now, if we rotate by the vertical axis, which you can see is actually the Z on this one, not necessarily the Y, because if we did the Y, you'd see it just does that. And I guess you could do that if you wanted to. Uh, but if we do it on the Z, you can see that the rotation the center is already set here, so we don't need to worry about creating a hinge. We can just animate this door as it is. So let's do that. Let's go to animation, create, uh, village, gate, anim. And then let's just create that anim. So let's create the uh, initial key uh, keyframe. I couldn't get my word out then which is going to be all based on just the Z axis. So I'm going to set that as one, then reset it to zero, just so we set that first keyframe. Remember, this turns to red, that's the keyframe set. So one second, which is 600 frames, we want it to be open. So we want it to be probably maybe there, I guess. Take the time to work with that animation. Don't rush it like I do. I'm just doing this to get through things. So let's stop that animation and let's go back to our project. Uh, area and let's select village gate and untick loop time because we only want it to play just the once. Now I'm going to save my scene there just so that's all set. <clears throat> Excuse me. So next thing we need to do is we need to work on this exit village trigger and I'm just going to set that active for now and we're going to basically replicate the uh, script that we already have which is in um, I believe is it village one and it is door open is that the one now i think we should be able to um use this script or rather reuse the script just by dragging and dropping that onto there so rather than type out a whole new script let's reuse the script and see if we get the desired effect and realistically we should so let's set just a couple of these variables here so the door is going to be obviously that door Creek sound is going to be whatever is attached to our FPS controller. If I can find it, there it is. And it's under sounds, effects, and it is door creek. Then let's go to our canvas. And we have action display, action text. So action display and action text. Extra cursor. And closed door. I don't think we really, really need to worry about that, do we? Because that's going to be um, something which we're not going to close. You can if you want to. You can recreate all of that, but I'm not going to. So all I'm going to do just for that extra particular uh, object is within that exit village trigger, I'm going to right click and let me think. Are we going to be able to do this correctly? So... As I'm doing this, I've not even tested this, I'm just trying to come up with different things that we can do here. And as I think about this logically, I don't think we're going to be able to do this as we want to, simply because this trigger is going to stay there. So, why don't we do this off the cuff, and let's take this script, hold control, press D to duplicate it, and let's see how this works instead. Now, this is a classic example of what I've done here. Classic example of testing things, working through and then realizing, nope, that's not going to work. Doing things like that, you'll always realize things aren't going to work and you'll come up with ingenious ways to get around it, like we have here. 
So gate village open. So let's open that up in Visual Studio. Now, the great thing is we barely need to change this script at all at this point, simply because the thing we're going to need to do is turn off uh, the box collider for the trigger and just get rid of a variable that we don't actually need, which was that extra one at the bottom that I was going to create. So as we get into this, let's change the class name to gate village open. There we go. And what we'll do, I uh, see, yes, there's another one because the animation name is different, isn't it? So yeah, we do need that extra script. See, there we go. So let's take the animation name from uh, the animations folder and let's place it here. There we go. And we don't need the closed door variable, so that can go, which means that line can also, in fact, do you know what? Let's actually change that line to say this dot game object dot get component box collider enabled equals false and save. So all we've done here, in fact, before we do that, I don't know why I whispered then, but we'll change that to open gate and resave. So all we've done here is get rid of an extra variable that we don't need. Most of the script remains the same. We've just changed the animator name and we've just turned off the box collider Although it already had, does it there, so I guess we don't really need to put that line in after all, do we? There we go. Save that. And that is our script done. So all we've done is get rid of a variable we don't need, change a little bit of text, and change the animation name. Let's head back to Unity. The error should disappear once the script has compiled, and it does. So let's go to our scripts, to village one, and let's drag and drop that gate village onto the trigger. And then we just need to set those variables back in. So if we click these that we've already set, we can actually find them quite easily. It's a little trick. You click it, it'll highlight yellow in your hierarchy. So action display, action text, extra cursor, into there, and I've misplaced that one in there, haven't I? So action display and action text into the correct one. And finally, let's remove that original script we placed on there. Let's turn off mesh renderer and everything is now in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this from start to finish very quickly. So let's turn off the exit village trigger and let's actually finally set the animation in the animator so as it doesn't automatically play that opening animation. So let's go to our animator, right click, create, empty, and then right click on that and set as default state. Just so as we can only play this on command. I'm gonna save my scene and I'm gonna play and test all of this out now. So we should be able to get outside of our village now once we've got our skeleton on the ground. So let's take the ax. Go and speak to our NPC. Everything working as normal. Yep, eliminate the skeleton threat. Let's go and do it. Oh, there he is. And there he goes. So the gate is still not accessible. So fingers crossed when we speak to our guy now. Thanks for your help. Here's the key out of the village. Why, thank you, kind sir. So let's head over there and let's open that gate once and for all. Perfect. And out we go. So we have that section down now. Just a couple of things that we'll probably touch upon at some point. Maybe just a little bit of extra sound effects. Obviously, the footsteps need to be adjusted, but that's something we can come back to. I want to focus on building bigger and better things right now and mechanics as well. So with that in mind, let's bring in another NPC. Now, we've gotten all of our characters from the asset store right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the next one in from a place called Mixamo. Mixamo is a fantastic place that you can get assets and animation or rather characters and animations from for free. So if you head over to Mixamo.com, create an account and log in, and you'll be presented with something that looks like this. Now, this isn't 
chaotic. It's a little bit confusing at first, but it's actually really simple to use. Your first thing you're going to want to do is select a character. I guess it can be any character. So let's go with this one here. If you get this error, just click use this character. Now, that's all good and well having our character, but how do we attach the animation? Well, once you have your character selected in Mixamo, go to animations and you can select any of these animations and there are a lot to choose from. So let's try searching for one that we need, like walk. And there we go. So let's choose one of these walking animations. What about, I don't know, this one. Does that one seem okay? It does. Now, because we're going to be using this character on our nav mesh, we need to make sure that the animation is animated in place. So make sure that is ticked. And it will look crazy here, but when we actually use the character inside Unity, it won't look so crazy. So just make sure you have in place ticked. Next, go to download. And the first one you'll need to choose is Collada with skin, 30 frames a second, and no keyframe reduction, and then click on download. It'll take just a moment to prepare itself and it will then download as you would expect in all honesty because what else would you expect to happen? So there we are, it's downloading now. Next thing we need to do is press on download again and change the format to FBX for Unity and then re-download again. And all this is doing is we're now downloading the model. The first download was the textures for the model. So this one is the model and the uh, animation. Next, what we need to do, let's find another animation that we can use and let's just do an idle animation. So standard idle, I guess it can be anything at all. Maybe that one, I guess. And we need to click download once again. And we only need to download FBX for Unity this time. So just download. And obviously it'll take just a moment. Now, to get all these into Unity is actually really simple. What you need to do is create a new folder somewhere. And then with your zip folder, you just need to extract the textures folder, just the textures folder. So if I go to here, I've already created my folder. And I have my textures folder right there. And obviously you can see those other two downloads are right there. So if I go back to Mixamo, you could just drag and drop these animations that you've downloaded into that folder. So that one folder now contains the textures that you downloaded, the idle animation and the walking animation that you downloaded as well. So now we can close everything down. So if we go back into Unity and let's find a place that we can actually place this particular um, NPC. So let's go to assets. Let's right click, create a folder. And let's have this one called external. In fact, I won't have a space there. I'll just have external characters. And in here, I am just going to drag and drop that NPC folder. Drag and drop, just like you would with any other asset. So I'm conscious that this has been going on for a little bit longer than I would like, but not to worry. If you get this, all you need to do is just click fix now. All that's telling you is that any normal maps that have been imported are not listed as normal maps in the texture. So if we go to that NPC folder now and let's bring in our NPC. So you can choose any one of these. It doesn't really matter too much, but I'm just going to go with the idle one just for now. So we're going to use this as our model. Drag and drop to there. Let's increase the size of our model as well. So two by two by two. And there we go. There is our model. Perfect. Now, there are some issues with some models when it comes to Mixamo. Uh, if you do have that uh, issue where it kind of looks a little bit crazy, the material doesn't look attached proper, I do have uh, a video on how to fix problems with characters downloaded from Mixamo. So if you check my channel out, you'll be able to find that there. So quickly, before we actually end this, I am going to press play and then switch back to scene view. And all we're going to see is the character doing quite literally nothing. 
So before we end this and then get into more focus with uh, our character, what we need to do is head to the animator for our character. Uh, over here, we need to right click on the animator itself and remove component. So we're going to start this from scratch. Uh, you can see, obviously, I'm in Unity 2019.1. Uh, so it is a little bit different if you're using an older version. Uh, so what we're going to do now is head into the prefab itself and extract that idle animation. So hold control, press D on the animation to extract. Let's tick loop time and then let's drag and drop that idle animation onto our character. And I'm going to F2 or rename. And I'm just going to call this NPC002. And if we go to the animator now, we can see idle is the default animation. So press play and head to the scene view. And we should be able to see the animation playing as normal. Can we see? Yes. So she is moving just a little bit. Now it's up to you what you want to do with this person. I, I guess there's no real set way of what you need to do or whatnot. Um, but you can customize it, change the material a little bit if you wanted to. It's your game at the end of the day. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to have our NPC walking around. When we stop and talk to our NPC, we're going to get it to stop. So we're going to deal even more with some AI. And we'll start looking at a multiple choice system, i.e. this NPC is going to ask us a question and we can have multiple choice. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.